welcome to the accounting class. In this session we shall take a further look at bonds, so let's get started. The first session considered the types of bond issue. In this session we shall look at the entries to the accounting system. There will be a number of entries. The first will clearly be when the bond issue is taken up. The entry will depend on how the bonds are sold, that is, the figure obtained for the bond issue. This may be a figure for bonds sold at face value, at a discount or at a premium. So what do these terms mean? Let us assume that all the bonds are sold and that there was a 10% interest rate and it was the market rate in force at the time of the sale. The bonds are sold for $200,000. This is called their face value. Like all entries for transactions, there will be debits and credits. Clearly, the money received for the sale will be a debit. It adds to the assets of the corporation. The second part of the double entry will be to record the liability of the repayment of the bonds. Since the bonds are to be repaid in 10 years' time, this will be regarded as a long-term liability and will appear as such on the financial statements. The next entry to be recorded will be the interest that has to be paid to the bondholders. It is probable that in the financial statements this will first appear as a liability. The investors will expect their interest to be paid fairly promptly after the year end, so it will be recorded in an account that is a current liability. The expense of bond interest will be a debit. The liability will be recorded in an account known as bond interest payable. Remember that a current liability is one that is due within the next 12 months. When the interest is paid to bondholders, another double entry is required. This entry is straightforward. The liability to pay the interest is removed, so that account will be debited. Remember that debits reduce liabilities. The cash account will be credited. Credits decrease assets. Bondholders and prospective investors look at two interest rates when considering whether to purchase or to continue to hold bonds. The interest rate that is on the bond certificate is the contracted rate. That is the rate that is agreed when the bonds are issued and purchased. The second rate is the market rate. To some extent, this means what other bonds are offering at this time. Any difference between contracted rate and market rate will have an influence on the way in which the bonds are sold. When contracted rate and market rate are the same, the bonds will normally be sold at face value. You will have to pay what the figure is on the certificate. If, however, the contracted rate is below market rate, then why should you pay full price for the bonds? In simple terms, you can get a better deal from a corporation issuing bonds at the market interest rate. A corporation may still be able to sell the bonds by selling them at a discounted rate. This means selling the bonds at a rate below their face value. The sale is usually expressed as a percentage of face value. Thus, Bonds sold at 95 would be sold at $95 for every $100 of bond value. To enter this into the accounting records, we need to record the amount of discount that has been given. An account known as the discount on bonds payable is used, and this is considered as a contra account. The cash realized would be $95,000 for every $100,000 of bond issue. The bonds payable sum is still recorded as $100,000. The contra account is used to record the discount and this account will be subtracted from the bonds payable on the balance sheet. It reduces the liability of bonds payable on the balance sheet. So what would the balance sheet look like? The balance sheet will show that at this point the liability on bonds payable has been reduced by $5,000 and so is recorded as $95,000. What happens if the rates are the other way around? In other words, suppose that the bonds are offering a rate that is above the market value. The bonds may then be offered above face value. We call this offering the bonds at a premium. Again, the rate is expressed as a percentage of face value. Bonds offered at 105 mean that $105,000 is needed to purchase $100,000 of bonds. 
Recording this entry requires that we have an account that records the premium on the bonds payable. The actual cash received was $105,000 and the bond payable amount was $100,000. The additional $5,000 is recorded as a credit in the premium on bonds payable account. To show this on the balance sheet we need to show the overall effect on bonds payable. At this point the liability is increased to $105,000. There will always be a final entry that is required. This entry will occur when the bonds are redeemed. We say that the bonds have matured when they reach the end of their term of issue. The bonds payable account is debited to reduce the liability. The cash account is credited which reduces the asset of cash. Bonds may be sold from one bondholder to another during their active life. Whatever figures apply to these transactions are not recorded in the accounts of the corporation. These sales of bonds are not a part of the accounting of the corporation. However, if the corporation were to buy back bonds, in other words redeeming callable bonds, this would represent a transaction and it would need to be recorded by the corporation. This ends our last session on bonds. Thank you for watching and for listening.